Hey everyone, it's Breaker from Asian Hype Servers. In this video, I would like to show you all a very useful Windows service called IPBAN. What is IPBAN? IPBAN is a Windows service that continuously runs and it monitors the server for failed login attempts. And when it, that, that number of failed login attempts reaches a certain number that you can configure on the service, um, then it will automatically ban the IP that's trying to guess the password, for example, for to RDP into your server. Um, and that can be any number of times that you can configure it, but I will show you that later on in this video. So um, a prerequisite that is required for the IP ban service to properly work is um, Windows Firewall needs to be turned on and there needs to be an, an inbound rule for an allow for RDP. So let's go ahead and, and do that really quick. So first, um, click the Start button and start typing Firewall. Open Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. Go to Inbound Rules. Right-click it. Go to New Rule. Click on Port. So um, more than likely, this is going to be 45931. But if you do not use 45931 to log into your server, I know some, some OGs um, don't use this, um, then the port that you're going to want to type here is 3389. But if you use 45931, put that here. Hit next, next, leave this the same, next, call this RDP allow, hit finish. Okay, so the next thing you wanted to, you're going to want to do is go here and go up to Windows Firewall at the root and go to Windows Firewall Properties and turn the firewalls on. Let's do all three for good measure. So go to each tab, go to the drop down, change the on. Once the, all three of them are on, hit OK. Okay, we're done with that step. You can go ahead and close this. And there is another prerequisite to this IP band service. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to this back to the start button and type, start typing local security policy. And when it's suggested, go ahead and open it. Uh, drop down local policies, click on security options. And the first setting that we're looking for is network security, restrict NTLM incoming NTLM traffic. Double click this, click on this drop down and click deny all accounts. Hit OK, hit Yes. We're just going to restrict some older type of um, authentication to, to, to be able to get into the server. So it's, it's pretty much not used anymore, so we want to turn it off just to apply that security measure. And the, the next thing that you want to do is um, go up a little bit to the LAN manager authentication level. Double click this, uh, click on this drop down. Um, choose send L NTLM v2 response only, refuse N LM and NTLM, hit OK, hit yes. All right, so we're done in here. We can close this. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is click on the start button and uh, start typing uh, PowerShell. Um, let's open a PowerShell console. Um, right click it and go to run as administrator, hit yes. And go down this page a little bit. So oh, by the way, the, the URL to this is github.com forward slash digital ruby forward slash IP ban. So about midway down through the page, um, there's an install section. And this is what you're going to want to put in your PowerShell console. Just copy this entire uh, line and go to your console and right click it and uh, to paste it and then um, hit enter. PowerShell is going to be a little slow at doing this because it's it's not as fast as uh, as Chrome at downloading things, so it's doing probably a limited number of bytes uh, being written at a time. So I'll uh, give this a moment or two. It's going to for first pull down the file, and then it's going to um, install the service onto the onto the machine um, as a Windows service, and it will also open a configuration file, which we're going to be taking a look at. So one moment. Okay, um, you're free to look through this configuration file and um, find things that, that interest you that you could configure, but the two things that I want to show you that, um, that are important for this are um, first, go to find, uh, type in whitelist,
So go, um, if you have a better editor, uh, like such as Notepad++, the location of this file, if you go to the C, if you go to the C drive and then go to Program Files, IP Ban, uh, IP Ban .config, you can just, if you have Notepad++, just go here and right click and, and open with Notepad++. Um, so, uh, and then set the language to XML because this is an XML based configuration. So, um, this add key um, whitelist. So, in the value um, between the between the quotes, you're going to want to list your your IPs you want to whitelist. So they're not really going to get flagged by the IP ban uh, service. So I put things like your home IP, maybe your cell phone IP. So if you want to, if you need to know how to figure out to your cell phone IP, uh, just go turn off your Wi-Fi on your cell phone. Go to Google and type in what is my IP address, IPv4, as in version four, and then you can get your IP that way. So put the IPs you want to whitelist, um, comma separated. So IP comma IP comma and then um, between these quotes and then when you're done just save the file and there's another um, setting that I want to show you up here too so right below app settings there's another key called failed login attempts before ban um, that's going to be set to five by default what this means is it's going to take somebody five consecutive tries at failing to guess the password correctly before their IP address gets banned um, I would recommend that you change this to either two or three, um, because given the amount of of big botnets there are out there, hackers have kind of tried to work around this by um, by using dynamic dynamically changing IP addresses. So they'll try to guess the password from one IP, then the next try will be from a different IP, the next try will be from a different IP. Uh, maybe it'll be the same IP a couple of times in that sequence. So um, the higher this num this value is here, it's going to be harder to detect them and ban them. So I would reduce this down to about two or three. But be careful if you if you reduce this down to two or three, and then you you fat finger your password a few times over, um, um, you could get yourself get yourself banned. Um, so I would definitely make sure like you put your IP address into that whitelist before you um, go to reduce this number. So I would change this to about two or three, and then, then um, I mean, you can look through this file, but um, that's pretty much like the only two things you, you really have to do. Once you're done, save the file and close it, and then open um, Windows Services. So just click the Start button and start typing Services. Open this. So this is installed as a Windows service, so you'll see it in the Windows Services list, and the title of the service is IP Ban. Um, it should be in a running state, but if not, you can right click it and go to start. If here's a tip, if you make any changes to the configuration, such as like what we would have just did and what I would recommend that you do, um, after you save that file, you need to restart that service. So that new configuration goes into effect. So, um, I would open services and go to IP ban, right click it and go to restart and the service will restart. And your new configuration will be in effect. Um, this service is set to automatically start. Um, so which means like if you reboot your server and when you log back in, the service should be running. So it should automatically start. But if it's not, um, I mean, I would, if you reboot your server, just, just go into services and give a quick check and see if IP bands running. And if it's not unlikely, but if it's not right, click it and go to start and the service will start and you'll be good to go. Um, Okay, so I mean, earlier in the video, I pointed I pointed out to you the location on the file system where the IP ban files are located. So if you if you're curious to see this in action and, and what it's doing, um, just go to C Program Files IP ban and just open this log file and and take a look at this. You can see it's a, it's actually actively banning um, foreign IP addresses that are trying to I guess try to guess guess their way into the server or brute force their way into the server. So you'll see it's 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 pretty much black adding um, foreign IPs that are trying to get into to a, a main blacklist. So um, 
after this has been done, they'll they'll just fail to even try to guess their way into the server. So um, that's pretty much it. So um, if you have any questions, uh, of course, please let me know. Um, this is a very useful utility and um, it will help protect your server against um, foreign and domestic attackers. So brute force is a very common, it's the most, probably the most original method of, of trying to hack a system. I mean, just guessing a password, but this IP band service will stop them dead in their tracks. So um, if you have any issues setting this up, um, I can try to help you, but it, it is pretty straightforward. Um, so just uh, if you have any questions, just just ping me on Discord and uh, and let me know. All right, so this has been a video that's um, showing you the IP band service. And uh, as always, thank you for your business and your patience and, and for trusting Asian hype servers. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Have a good day.